Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at panoramas again, but on a different level. We're going to take the panoramas to another level. So what is a panorama? Well, it's it's that, you know, kind of oblong landscape, long looking picture you can take with your phone or anything like that. And you can do that at a twin motion. And I've actually made a previous video on that. So I'd highly encourage you to check that out. So this is kind of a, a second panorama video in that we're going to take it to the next level. So what these actually are, are yes, they're panorama images, but they're also 360 images, which is fantastic, which means we can do a lot more with them. And you'll see. So if you do happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It, it tells me that you did and that you might even like the video. Okay, so we're in the same project, everything. We're going to end up exporting another version of a panorama similar to the last video. Again, check that one out first so you know what we're doing here because I'm going to blow through the the export part of, of panoramas in twin motion really quickly so we can get to the cool stuff. So I've got this here and I'm going to go to my panorama and then I've got a panorama here and you can see like I've got all my settings, whatever. It looks nice. I've got a sunset, whatever. And so we're actually going to combine this, you know, a panorama video with a previous video that I've done on exchanging the skies or changing out, making a custom sky. So not only are we going to make a 360 image that we can, you know, literally look around, which is kind of the point of a 360 image, but we're also going to change the sky out. So if you're familiar with that video, please check that out. If you're not, do it. But what we'll do and what we had to do for that video, as long as, you know, we'll, we'll do the same thing for this one, we are going to end up creating a sphere. And we're going to make a sphere that's essentially a green screen that will serve as our background or, or something that we can easily select in Photoshop to replace with a custom sky of our own. So to do that, I'm going to go to, of course, my objects, primitives, and then I'll find this sphere cut right over here. And I can just place it anywhere. Typically, the center of your scene is fine. So I'm going to place that there. And what I want to do now is get the material and I want to replace this material with a green screen color. And of course, I'm because I am who I am. I have looked that particular color up. It's it is a particular color it, for the sake of this video it doesn't necessarily matter. But I do want to get as close to a green screen color as I can. That's fine. You can really get anywhere. You just need some sort of contrast. High contrast green is perfect. So with this, I then need to scale this to the point where it is literally covering up the sun and the extents of my image. So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to, of course, change to select this material or select this prism. And I want to change to the scale and, you know, anything to start with works. So let's do this 10 times and we could see that, you know, yeah, it, it is starting to get there has not quite that's not quite enough so maybe another 10 times is enough now you notice we can't quite see it at this point so if you want to make sure you see it i know it's still selected because here it is i can click f and I, it will essentially zoom me out to that particular image or that particular model element and i think this is much too large so i'm going to scale this down a bit so when it looks you know basically something like this you know, maybe just a slightly larger because I want it to cover my full scene. Maybe another one and a half times. Like that ought to be great. So if you want to get back to something in your scene, you literally just click anything. You know, that's fine. And then choose F, click F, and it will take you directly to that element, which is perfect. So that gets me back to, you know, where I am, what I want to see. So you'll also notice that, you know, it's messing up the sun, the shadows and everything. And it's that's kind of the point. It's covering up the shadows, but not necessarily the sun. So there's one last thing we need to do, and we need to actually make this material double sided so we could see the green on the inside as well. So with this material, you know, that prism still selected and looking at the material, I'll go to settings and then two sided. And as soon as I do that, everything turns green. And you will also notice that because I put it nicely, beautifully on the ground, I get this clipping, I get this green. So I don't want that necessarily. So I'm going to click F again on once I choose the actual sphere. Choose that sphere, F, and now I can see it all. I just want to move this down, you know, anything, really almost anything, but so down a foot or something like that. Again, we'll go back to this element to get me zoomed back into place. And you'll notice here, as I look around, everything is green in the background. That's great. And because I have water and all that, I need to bring this down a bit more. So I might bring this down, you know, 
30 feet because of this particular scene, but it's kind of up to you on basically you just need to get it down to the point where the, the sphere itself is down. So let's click the sphere there and then bring this down. And it, again, it will not take much. I don't need this to be, you know, super far down, but there's my sphere. Let's bring this down maybe 30 feet. That seems about right. Yep. And that will look good. Maybe just a bit more just to make sure we cover all our grounds or uncover all of our grounds. So there we go. We're good. We got our, we've got a background. We've got a green screen. We've got something to work with. So now I'm going to go back to just completely go back to my panorama, make sure I export a version of the panorama with my green, with my background, my green, and then a version without it. So again, we, it's that simple. I need to export a version basically with this hidden and with this not hidden. So you can see the difference here. Now we do need to get more contrast because this is green. It's not really doing a whole lot for us other than it's making the background look kind of green. So it's not quite perfect. What we need to do as far as selecting Photoshop, the whole point is that we can go in Photoshop, select this green and be done with it. So I need to do a little more work when it comes to this green export. So what I need to do is actually in the settings of my panorama, which is, you know, it's nice that I don't have to do this globally, but we need to deal with the lighting. I want to start to change the sun, maybe end up turning the sun off. I, there's a, a number of things that we can do and try to attempt to get some sort of, you know, solid green color. And that it really depends on lots of things. You, you, I might bring the sun down, bring the sun up. It, it's, it very much depends because I have the current time of day set to like a sunset that is more or less our issue because my guess is as soon as I change this from like later in the day to the middle of the day, I'm not going to have this contrast and this weird color. I want like that solid green color. So let's change this to the middle of the day and look at that. That is, that is looking good, but you'll notice <laughs> I've got these weird lines in the back and I think that has something to do with where my sun is. So let me just, you can see as I adjust the time, <laughs> the sun does in fact move and change and everything. So that's, that's just kind of the way it is. And because I'm, I'm getting some haze and all of this with the fact that I have not updated my reflection probe. So be sure to do that. So what I'm trying to do for this image is just get my flat looking green background. And because I have some of the haze, I do want to update these reflection probes. So let's go ahead and update those. And while this is updating, it, again, this doesn't really matter. So like we're going to have two versions we're going to work with. We're going to work with this 360 pano, and then we're going to work with my finished clean version. But with the finished clean version, all we want to do is get the new sky. So with this green version, I don't care about my context, my image, other than the green background and getting that as green as possible and as contrasty as possible. So I can really get some nice selections and like really select all of it at once and then just replace with a new sky and be on my way. So that's what I want to do. So, you know, this is, this is pretty good. It's not too bad. I could make some more tweaks to this, but you know, all in all, I'm getting a pretty solid amount of green in here that is fairly consistent. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking to be able to get this into one green. And so like all these reflections that are from the green background, I don't care about. They're not going to show up in my final image. So that's just, that's something to be aware of. And it's nice because it doesn't matter so much. Let's go ahead and refresh this, make sure we are on the most current. And again, you can, we can spend a lot of time changing you know, some of these values to get uh, something that's more of a solid green in the background. And of course, changing the exposure does help a bit. And so maybe I'll bring that down to there. So, you know, a clear solid green in the background, that's pretty good looking. Uh, but other than that, I think I'm pretty good. I'll reduce some of the ambient light again, because we don't care about that. We just want to get this green to, to select it. Okay, so now at this point, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to refresh this again, come back, and then I will export this with my green background, and then I will turn the green background off. And with both of those exported, I'll have a nice finished 360 panorama, and then I'll have this green background version, and then we can go into Photoshop. And it will, at this point, you, you might have noticed similarities between the last video and this one, but the idea is that we have a different result, and we have a 360 panorama that has a custom sky and we're really happy with. So I'm going to export this, and I'll see you in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I got my panorama, that finished image that I'll be happy with once I replace the sky. I've got my green background panorama and a couple other skies that I've downloaded that we're going to end up replacing. 
and using. Now let's open my green screen panorama and you'll notice I, you know, it's just kind of the way it is in the rendering. There's some other settings I can hopefully change, but I want to try and get this green color everywhere and not just within like the small portion of what I'm looking at. And that's, that's just like this whole distance thing. And I'm going to have to go back into twin motion. It's because I can start to select some of this green, but I really, it gets kind of difficult, especially through windows and things like that. I don't want it to be as difficult as it, as this, it really shouldn't be. I should be able to select this one green and then choose similar and choose every other green, which that works, except I, you know, I'm missing a lot of green. So let's go back to twin motion and see what we can do. So in twin motion, what I have done is reduce my shadows all the way down to, you know, basically nothing as low as I can go because we want contrast. Again, we don't care about what this looks like. We only care about getting the green to choose the green and pick it from this you know, white bat, white model. And so there's a lot of other things we can do. I can, I can change the white balance. You know, again, not, most of this doesn't matter. I just want to be able to find and isolate that green, but you know, that the exposure, um, something I do recommend for something like this is for the weather, make sure it's set to clear because you'll notice as I get more clouds, that has a great effect on what we see. So definitely make that clear for sure. Make that clear. And you might even go as far to is make it make it winter because you can see I can get a background that is basically all snow up into the point of like the landscape ending. So that's really important too. As far as everything else, you know, th this is should all be fine. And so really my thought is when I export now, I'm going to have this stark white model and then this nice green background. So everything that's green or even close to green, I can select and boom, trade that out with the new sky. So let's go ahead and export this one. So this unfortunately is what we're stuck with and it's just kind of the way it is. I have a feeling that it has something to do with the size of the sphere or just the extents of what twin motion is exported or something. So I'm missing something. If you do discover that, let me know in the comments. I'm curious what this is, but we can still work with this. Like this is, it's not like I can't select this guy. Clearly I can, it's just going to take an extra couple of seconds here because I just need to select all of these points here and you'll notice that it is pretty quick. I need to select everything in the green here and then maybe some behind these windows and through these windows and whatnot. Of course they're here, but that's not that difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, select that, make the mask. And at this point, if you don't know what I'm doing, then definitely check out the previous video that I did on making a custom sky for just the still image and still rendering for twin motion. So with that, it looks pretty good. I've got my mask background. It's all gone. It's beautiful. And so really there's not a whole lot to do. Let's go ahead and uh, open and actually link a couple of these skies that I have so we can get an idea of maybe if it's something we want or what we don't want. Let's go ahead and place this one. I want to make sure this is behind so we can see what we're looking at. Cool. Like immediately that looks, it looks cool. That looks good. Obviously I have some background here, so maybe I want to rotate this a bit. Like there's a lot of editing that we can do to make this look right. Of course it's the, the ocean. So maybe we end up extending this a bit. And you know, that, that looks pretty good as far as the sky. Maybe I'd like it. Maybe I don't. Let's go ahead and try the other one. Place the link here. Work with this one. Make sure this one is behind as well. So there we go. Bring this up. You know, I think I'm liking this one a bit more just because of really how it looks. It looks pretty good. Got my sunset sunrise in the background. Cool. And so, you know, really that's kind of it. You know, I, I've got my nice sky, but what I need to do is end up bringing this into my other like actual finished rendering shot, which is going to be this one. So I like the way this looks, but you know, the sky's a little boring, whatever, you know, I, I could get a lo little more out of this. And so what we need to do is now bring in my, my layer here that has my mask. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer and then duplicate this in my panorama, my finished panorama. And then I'll go ahead and actually end up placing again my the the sun or the new sky that I would like, which is going to be this one. So make sure this is in the back and we make sure that again, all we need to do is select this. We don't really care about what we're getting as far as, you know, this green. Like I just I don't care about that at all. Like that's I don't care at all. I just need the selection. So then I can simply hide it. And you'll notice now I have this beautiful selection from my 
finished image. Press control and then just click the mask. It will be selected. Then we can come down to our finished image and then click the mask again and boom, it's gone. Beautiful. It is gone. We have our consistent colors here. And then all we need to do is end up showing our sky. And you know, that looks pretty good. I probably want to do a little bit of color correction to make sure I get a little bit of more orange out of the sky. So I'm going to do that. And you know, then there's one final step that I'm really excited about, which is actually viewing this in 360 because at this point, yes, it's a panorama, you know, like we're getting this effect in a, in a way, but it's the 360 part that we care about. So I will see you in just a second when this is color corrected. So here's my before color correction and then here's my after. It looks great. I'm excited for what this might look like. So the last step here, of course, is we just need to save this. We need to save this as a PNG and I'm going to call this, you know, just panorama final. That's fine. But here's the cool part. So, you know, yeah, you can, something I forgot to mention, the skies. Uh, I didn't mention this in the last video with changing the custom skies out because it was not a 360. It was not a panorama. So what we can do here is get skies from HDRI Haven, which is a great place. It's free. You can get some really nice looking skies, which is where I got both of these. And so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But at this point, I want to look at this panorama in a way that it's not just flat, that it is a true 360 image. And so where can we do that? Well, if you just go on to Google and search Panorama Viewer, you're going to end up at a place. I think it's one of the first couple links, but I'll leave this in the description below as well. It's literally just you're going to drag and drop your file in here and it's going to be a nice Panorama Viewer, a 360 viewer. So let's go ahead and open our file here. And I want to choose Panorama Final. And look at this, I'll go to full screen and that is cool. Like this is what you want from a panorama. This is cool. And you, obviously you can see how great the sky we made looks like it. I, I really like it a lot, um, but really, yeah, that's cool. And this is something that you can send to a client. You, you, you send this image along with the link to this basic website, they drag and drop it in and you're good to go. You can look at absolutely everything in this shot. And it looks really good. And I'm pleased with it. Very pleased, with it. especially that it's free and over the like over the Internet, over the Web. It's just in your browser. Very simple stuff. So you will need to turn ad blocker off. That's that's about all I can tell you. But other than that, it's free. Really cool. And, you know, that will do it for this video. Again, I make sure you watch those first two videos that I made. One, the custom skies and two, the the panorama. There's not a ton with the panorama other than this we can export it like any other image and this is what we can get but this video puts both of those together in a way and makes one grand video where you can get hey you know like this nice 360 image where uh, you've traded out the sky it's a custom sky you've created and put in traded out in photoshop yourself so that will do it for this video if you happen to learn something which i sure hope you did throughout the course of the video please demolish that like button it tells me that you might have learned something or that you would have liked it so Again, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.